Here we have f of t equals t cubed minus 5t squared plus 6t all divided by 2 to the fourth minus 4t squared. And we want to evaluate a couple limits. We'll start with the limit as t goes to 2 and then follow up with the limit as t goes to negative 2. Uh, the first step, anytime you do a limit like this, is to just plug in 2 and see what happens. But there's so much going on in this original f of t that I think I'm going to simplify it down a little bit first to make everything a little simpler. That'll benefit us in both parts A and B. So let's see if we can get some factoring going here. I think we can, right? Uh, we can get a t out of the top there. So that leaves us with t squared minus 5t plus 6. All right, down below we have t squared factors out, leaving us with t squared minus 4. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of cancellation already. This t goes away with the 2 down there. But there's more. We can keep going here. Let's factor this trinomial now. Um, let's see, so I'm thinking t and t. 6, let's do minus 3 and minus 2. That factors nicely. And then down below, let's do t plus 2, t minus 2. That's the old difference of squares there. Even more cancellation. Oh, don't forget this t still hanging out from, from over here. Um, okay, so finally, all of that, we have t minus 3 over t times t plus 2. All right, so that's a little easier to work with. So now let's take a look at a. We want the limit as t goes to 2. So again, the first thing to try is to just plug in 2. So let's see what happens if we just try f of 2. All right. We already have this nice canceled form, so we can see what happens here. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 up here, and then 2 times 4. Oops, 2 times 4. Okay, so that gives us negative 1 eighth. So that limit was nice. We didn't have to do anything too crazy. We just plug, in, plug it in, and we get negative 1 eighth done. Now, you may be saying, but if we plug in 2 right here, we would get 0 in the denominator, thus it would be undefined. That's fine, right? The limit doesn't care what actually happens at the point 2. The limit only cares what happens as we get infinitely close to 2. So all bets are off when we actually hit t equals 2, but we're just seeing what happens as we approach in on 2. Let's take a look at b. Now we're coming into negative 2. So again, maybe we can get lucky again. Let's just try plugging in negative 2. If we plug in negative 2 into our equation, our new simplified form of f of t, let's just try it out. f of negative 2 is negative 2 minus 3. That's negative 5 over negative 2, uh-oh, times 0. Nope. We are not getting off the hook that early. So there's no further cancellation we can do up here. So something's going to happen. It's going to be some kind of infinity or it does not exist here. We just have to figure out which. The way we do that is to approach this thing from the left and from the right. So we need to check out the one-sided limits and see what those do. So let's do the limit as t goes to negative 2 from the left of t minus 3 over t t plus 2. And we know that this limit is either going to be plus infinity or minus infinity. We just need to figure out which one. So a nice approach to this is to just examine the point negative 2 here on the line. As we come in from the left, we can essentially just pick a point very close to negative 2, maybe negative. Um, so we want to be to the left of it. So that's going to be negative 2.1. So this negative means we're coming in from the negative direction. So I'm going slightly left of 2 to negative 2.1. All right, so now I'm just going to plug in. So I'm kind of, I'm, and this is kind of a mental exercise. We're going to plug in negative 2.1 just to see if each of these terms is positive or negative. So I plug it in here, negative 2.1 minus 3. Well, that's negative. Right here, negative 2.1, that's negative. Negative 2.1 plus 2 is still negative. So we have negative divided by a negative divided by another negative, three negatives gives us this negative, so this whole thing is negative infinity. Okay, 
So now let's see, let's see what happens as we approach negative 2 from the right, from the positive direction, so from the right. We still have the same function, t minus 3 over t, t plus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to examine 2 again, or negative 2 on my number line, and I need to pick a point just to the right of it. So how about here we have negative 1.9, right? It's, it doesn't matter which point you choose, you just need to make it in close enough to where it doesn't get tangled up with any of these numbers. So as close in as you can, really, you could do negative 1.999. Notice just using negative 1.9 is, is going to be close enough in our case. So plugging in negative 1.9 and seeing what happens. Well here up top we have negative 1.9 minus 3, so that's still going to be negative. Just plugging it in for t, that's going to be negative. Negative 1.9 plus 2, however, is now going to be positive. So we have negative divided by a negative and a positive. That gives us a positive infinity. But remember, the limit exists at a point if and only if the one-sided limits at that point are equal. And here we have the left side going to negative infinity and the right side going to positive infinity. Thus, the limit at negative 2 does not exist. The limit as t goes to 2, negative 2, of this f of t does not exist, which we will abbreviate as d and e for a final answer there. So yes, it's a little bit cumbersome, but that's the way we need to approach these infinite limits. You just have to break them down and, and just take a close look by picking some close points and, and seeing what happens.